Okay, hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. Welcome to this week's episode of Very Really Good, man. What's up? How are we doing? Uh, this is episode 180 something. I I'm not sure. Um, I don't I don't know. I I hey hey you know what? I'll be honest. I don't know. I forgot to turn my light on. <sighs> Hold on. Oh, he spent. Come on, okay, spend all that time setting up and organizing everything and getting everything ready and then I go to film and I still didn't I still didn't do everything. But it's all good, man. It's fucking it's uh it's eight PM on Monday. Um and uh we're here recording the podcast, having a good time. I'm t- uh all right, a few things I gotta go over, okay? First off, uh I got a haircut. Okay, got my hair cut a little. I still got the mullet. That's not going anywhere. Um, but yeah, man, I got a haircut. It feels good. It was like, there was so much of it on my head and it was getting a little out of control. As you could see, probably in the last episode, uh, it was just really long. Um, and you know, you gotta, you gotta get it cut to maintain it sometimes. You know what I mean? And also, uh, I fucking love it. I feel like it looks sick. I got these little bangs right now that I'm, I'm low key fucking with. And, um, I, I like how it looks. I like how I look. Um, and, uh, you know what, I, I, uh, I, I went out the other night, um, <clears throat> with, uh, Dean and Jenna, uh, and Jack and, uh, Brittany, met Brittany Broski, uh, she's fucking funny as shit, super nice, um, but, yeah, man, it was, uh, we all went out, um, and right before we left, I like took a picture of myself, put on my story. I was like, "Got a haircut," because you know I was, fe- you know what I, you know what? I was feeling myself. You know, what? I'll say it. I'll admit it. I was feeling myself. I was like, "Damn, this I I like how I look right now. I like my haircut." You know, I had I had a sick fucking sweater on that Jenna got me for my birthday. I was like, I was, I was feeling myself. I wasn't like literally, you know. I mean, I you always feel yourself existing you know, in, um, the world in, you know, like you can, you, you feel it, you know what I mean? <laughs> you feel yourself. Uh, but I was like li- figuratively, right? Emotionally and, uh, not emotionally. That's weird. Uh, you know what I'm trying to fucking say, dude? I, I was like confident. I was like, I look good. My new haircut. I like my, I like my outfit. I'm going to take a, I'm going to snap a pic for the gram. The lighting was crazy, you know, and that's fine. So, uh, I, I snapped, I, you know, I, I snapped a pic. I was like, whatever. And then, um, like five minutes later, you know, I opened Instagram, you know, I was like, you know, and, and like, I already got some like DMS from like people that like have DM me before that I've seen. Um, and then, man, just like every response was just like, dude, I got one that was like, ew, (laughs) yo. And I got, (laughs) ew, someone said ew to that, to my, to my, uh, because I cut the hair on my head. Um, someone said ew because a stranger who they do not know on the internet they don't know them. They don't. You don't. Fuck, they don't know me, but they decided to message me and say "ew" because they didn't like how I looked. A stranger. I'm a stranger to you. Okay. You don't know me. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's so fucking weird, dude. Can you imagine walking up to someone who like works at the Starbucks? You know, you see them all the time. You don't know them, right? Because you're strangers. You know, you have maybe a some sort of relationship with them that's strictly in that one zone. It's transactional, right? Uh, just like this is, really, right? You're, you're watching because, you know, you want to be entertained, right? You want to you laugh at something, and I, and I try to do that. I try to be entertaining. I, I try to make you laugh. I really do. I try my hardest. And uh, so it is, you know? So imagine going up to Starbucks to so like a barista that you kind of know, and then you you're like, and they got a new haircut that for whatever reason you don't like, and then you're like, uh, yeah, can I just get a grande? Uh, oh, what the fuck? Ew. 
sorry, I lost my. Uh, I'm not even thirsty anymore. I uh, all of my bodily functions have have manifested in my brain into anger and disgust for your fucking haircut. It's ugly. You're ugly. You're ugly to me now, person I don't know. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Um, but since I'm just a, a person on the internet, right? I don't exist. I'm not real. I don't I don't feel myself. <laughs> I'm not real. I'm a fucking VTuber, okay? I've been an I've been a fucking avatar this whole time. All right? That's you know that new avatar movie? It's about me. The way of the water or whatever, or the some shit. You guys see the trailer for the Avatar movie where it's just like a montage of shit from the movie? No plot. No. I kind of like that. You know, what I, you know what I mean? I actually fuck with that trailer. Like the trailer, if you haven't seen it, it's like just shots from the movie and like pretty shots from the, mu- the mu- from the movie and then like a nice song. And it's like Avatar fucking water park or whatever it's called. Water world. I don't know. Um, we got to do that more often, man. Because movie trailers have become, like, too formulaic, you know? It's like, the trailer starts now. And it's like, you know what I mean? I hate, have you seen that shit, too? For when you watch a trailer, they'll have, like, a mini teaser before it starts, and it's, like, something crazy. It'll be, like, Tom Holland, like, hanging onto a car that's falling out of a plane. Even if it's for, like, a Sandra Bullock romantic comedy, still the same, like, crazy action shot. Trailer starts. <laughs> yeah, here's Tom Holland on, in Uncharted. But the trailer for How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days uh, starts right now. Also, dude, an alarm just went off in this building. So I hope I don't get fucking. Uh, they just kicked the door down. <laughs> what are you doing in here? <laughs> I'm recording a podcast. And it's trying to be funny, and you're bro- and you're blowing it, dude. And the SWAT guy's like, oh, what the fuck? What's wrong with your hair? And I go, ah, damn it. You're right. Uh, but yeah, man, I had like an overwhelming amount of like fuck, like haircut haters. And if you're one of those people, fuck you, dude. I mean, you're entitled to your opinion, but also fuck you, okay? <clears throat> I'm sick of it, man. I'm 28 now, all right? I'll talk about that in a second. But I'm a fucking old man, all right? I'm over that shit. I'm over fucking teens on the internet telling me they don't like my haircut, okay? You're blocked, okay? (laughs) Sorry. I had to block two people on Twitter the other day, man. And guess what? Felt great. I got to do that. We got, guys, block more people. It's incredible. It's the best. I love it. Because I used to just like respond to that shit and be like, well, I'm going to make fun of you back. But you know what? No, blocked. And it's it, right? You let go, right? So that's what I'm doing. You, if I, because it's one thing to be like to give like constructive criticism, right? For like a video, you know, or if someone's like, yeah, that would have been yeah, for going forward. You should do this. It should it'd be like really help you out, you know? That's nice. But if you're like, well, oh, you look ugly as shit, you know. I mean, it comes with the territory. I mean, I have it so good. <laughs> it's it's as much as I complain about shit, you know? But that's what that's what life is, man. It's complaining when shit pisses you off. So I'm going to keep doing it. I, yo, straight up, I love complaining. I love it. Any comedian, any person, really, but especially comedians, it's all complaining, right? It's all like, look at this thing I, that I think is silly. I'm going to talk about it because I'm so fucking annoyed, right? I, I'll complain about anything, man. I don't care how good life gets. I am complaining, okay? Are my slippers on backwards? Oh, my God, they are. No, they're not, are they? This is like an optical illusion, dude. Sli- slipper more like fucking slippery. I can't get these things on. Okay, fuck, man. Jesus Christ. Okay, so I'm 28 now. I had my birthday last week. I turned 28. Uh, I turned 28 years old. Um, last Wednesday, May 4th. Um, and uh, it's weird, man. It's weird saying that out loud. I know it's just like another number. 
I feel like when you get past the age of like 25, it's like, well, until I'm 30, I, nothing really matters, you know? I'm just in my like late 20s now. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I already was. Like 21, 22, 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, so I'm in my late 20s now. Um, but I feel the exact same as 27. I mean, uh, I don't know. I feel like if you would have told me, uh, no, if you would have asked me maybe like, maybe like three or four years ago, what I thought about like getting older, right? Like when I was like maybe 23, 24, right? And you're like, so what are you going to be, so how are you going to feel when you're like 28 or like, how do you feel about growing up? Like I'd be fucking like, I'd be like, oh, I hate it. I'm freaking out, you know? Um, but it's weird. The older I get, like the, like, I feel like the more I'm like embracing it, like aging, you know? And I think that's just like maturity, getting older. Um, it, it, it matters less. Um, so yeah, man, I, I feel good. My birthday party was lit as fuck, dude. It was fun as hell. Uh, we rented a limo, dude. And I haven't been in a limo since my grade eight graduation. And I was in there by accident. You know, I not ac- like not by an accident, but, um, what the hell, man? Why'd you sign me out? Bitch. Um, yeah, man, uh, we rented a limo. L- okay, in eighth grade, when I graduated, I went to the grad thing, and then we had like a, I went to the ceremony, and then we had like an after party after. Um, it's like a dance. It's actually so weird to think that that's a thing I went to, like a dance party in some like, uh, some banquet's basement, and there was just a bunch of sweaty kids dancing. It's so weird to think that I was there, uh, when I was like twelve or no thirteen, I guess. Um, weird as fuck. That was cringe that I did that. That was weird. Um, but like, I think my my one of my like friends, uh, she lives on my street, but her dad owned like a fucking limo company, and he pulled up to the thing and was like, "All right, I can fit like." 20 kids and i was like one of the the first 20 that was like me so i got to go in a limo but uh and then a girl made fun of my socks because i was wearing white socks uh with my suit and apparently supposed to wear black socks and i got made fun of so it's all good but i made fun and i made fun of and i sort of resented her forever uh, and i still do kind of um but it's all good i moved on i'm 28 now i'm super mature I'm, I'm a mature guy um you know I'm actually, uh, I'm actually a mature guy. No more like farty, poopy humor. Um, but yeah, we rented a limo. Um, you know, we were drinking and stuff. We got, we had our own music playing, uh, and it was fun as fuck. We had, we took like a 40 minute drive to, uh, Dave and Buster's. Because, bro, I love playing games. I love it. I love playing games. I love, uh, you know, little arcade games and winning stuff while drinking. It's the most fun. Um, so I went to Dave & Buster's, um, drank a bunch there, played a bunch of games. Um, and then one of the workers, like, uh, recognized me on the way out, and I was fucking hammered. I was blackout, so I don't know what. I mean, I wasn't blackout because I remembered. I remembered that, you know. She was like, you know how you do videos? And I was like, yeah, I actually do. I know that very well. Um, but yeah, and then we took another limo ride back to a bar, and then we just kept drinking and stuff, but it was fun, man. It, all my friends were there, and it was uh, it was fucking sick. So, 28. 28 uh, years later, the movie, you know? You know, you got 28 days, 28 months, and then the sequel to that... 28 years, and it's about uh, me right now. Two, the first two movies are about a zombie apocalypse, but the third one is about a, a YouTuber, just sort of uh, uh, living his life. Uh, and it's the worst movie ever, and do not see it. <laughs> uh, all right, we could get into some of this fucking topical shit that I wanted to talk about. We have 15 minutes. I've been blabbing about me. 
what is this podcast about? You know, me or 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 other stuff. We'll never know. Uh, yo, fucking Dave Chappelle got uh, tackled at a show, like on stage. Did you guys see that shit? That's so fucking scary. Like, I don't. Like, as much as I disagree with, you know, the things uh, that Dave Chappelle says uh, and some of the jokes, a lot of the jokes that he's made, you know, it's not my, it's not not anything I would do, you know, but, you know, clearly there is a a fucking audience for him. um, And I I don't, you know what I mean? As much as I don't like what he's saying, obviously, like, don't fucking like, like, man, Obviously, don't attack people on stage. You know what I mean? Like, what's that going to do? Right? What's that really going to accomplish? Right? Like, the guy got fucked up, too. Like, the guy who, like, tackled Dave Chappelle. But, like, man, I don't... I just can't... Like, fathom... I mean, I don't know all the details, obviously, but, like, I think fucking rule number one is, like, don't fucking attack performers, you know, anywhere, you know? Don't fucking attack performers on stage. Like, that's that's wild. Yeah, that's actually fucking crazy. Um, luckily, no one was, like, seriously hurt, other than the person who, like, tackled them, but, um, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, there's not really anything I can really even add to that, but it's, like... I'm always so scared of, uh, because I've heard stories of like you know people in Toronto at shows where they're like getting fights. Some audience member, like some drunk guy, will just like pick a fight with them, um, and it's scary, man. Especially because like when you're on stage, it's like hard to see shit. Like it's like it's hard to see most of the audience, so you don't you don't know. Until it's, like, too late, you know? So, man, honestly, uh, heckling is better, you know? Just do that, honestly. <laughs> I'm not saying heckle at shows, but, you know? If you're going to be, like, if you're so mad that you're, like, oh, I just want to get up and tackle that person, just yell something, all right? And that's fine. That's that's the one time it's, like, allowed, I think, right? Uh. Yeah, it's so weird. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I was thinking, like, how crazy it would be if you're, like, watching a... Because it's an entertainment. It's a play, right? Or not like It's not a play, but it's, like, it's entertainment, right? So imagine you go to, a, like, a movie. <laughs> you watch, uh, you watch like, fucking, I don't know, The Dark Knight, right? Uh, and, spoiler alert, when, like, Harvey Dent, dies or something you know and you don't like that part because you really liked harvey dent you really like two-face and he dies uh imagine you you just being like i don't like that i don't agree with it i don't like that and then you just run up to the screen and like punch it rip it and stuff and like that's the thing man i mean like Dave Chappelle says some shit that's, like, pretty, um, I don't know, especially towards, like, the the trans uh, community, like, pretty harmful shit. Um, So it's like, man, I I can understand someone being so angry and, like, being like, you're hurting me and my community so much that I... And I can't. I feel powerless, and I can't really do anything to stop you. Um, so I'm just gonna fucking tackle you. I mean, like, not good at all. Um, again, it's like the the Chris Rock thing. It's like, I, what do I know, man? <laughs> you know what I mean? I try to give like whenever I try to have like an opinion on something, I'm like, but but like, what do I know? I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know, man. Yo, what we actually... Okay, we got to watch this, man. 
So, okay, y'all know who Kirk Cameron is? First off, Kirk Cameron, bad name. Uh, that's a bad name, brother. You got a bad name. You know what I mean? I was, uh, fun fact, my dad wanted to name me Kirk. He wanted to name me Kirk. Uh, so my name would be Kirk Connor, which uh, if uh, if he did that, I'd be the one tackling him. Okay, I'd be tack- He would be Dave Chappelle in this. Okay, I'd tackle my dad whenever I saw him. If, if every time I like Christmas, Easter, fucking Thanksgiving, I'd be f- ch- like full body tackling my dad. You're like, hey Curtis, I'd be like, fuck you. That's for naming me Kirk, bitch. You know what I mean? Kirk Connor. Yeah, would you subscribe to that guy? No shot. No fucking shot, man. The two K sounds? No. Kirk Connor. No, three of them. Bad. Three K sounds? Not good, man. Get those letters away from each other in, in that specific number. Uh, so Kirk Cameron... He is an actor and an evangelical Christian. He's known for his role as Mike Seaver. I hardly know her. Uh, Mike Seaver on the ABC sitcom Growing Pains. Um, So he's like super Christian and shit. Um, But he is actually making a documentary. Okay. He's making a documentary called um, The Homeschool Awakening. So it's uh, it's about <laughs> it's about how like, okay, hold on. I'll read the, the description and then we can watch it. But it's pretty fucking crazy. So uh, families across the nation are experiencing the homeschool awakening, taking advantage of the freedom and opportunities uh, for self-discovery with the world as their classroom. Join award-winning actor Kirk Cameron as he dives into the adventures of dynamic American families on a mission to put fun and faith back into learning. Uh, The Homeschool Awakening explores the ins, outs, and honest answers to homeschooling's most frequently asked questions. So, let's watch this documentary trailer because it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. I don't really understand this idea that parents should decide what's being taught. Give me a break. Dude. (laughs) This is so corny, bro. (laughs) Give me a break. I'm so tired of this. And then the fucking... (laughs) Got Imagine Dragons on making the trailer music. What's up with, how, yo, man, trailer music, you know? It's that swag rock stuff. Okay. Again, man, let's get the Avatar trailer shit for this. Okay. <laughs> it's just vibes. Uh, so it's all these people saying that, like, I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. And, like, low-key, they're spitting. You know? Some people growing up, uh, they have bad parents. Ever think of that? You know? Some people growing up have bad parents, um, racist parents, abusive parents, bigoted parents. Um, you know, parents that are, you know, maybe not equipped to parent a child. You know what I mean? So, you know what? It's good that they you, you can send their... They spend a lot of time with a teacher who is educated and knows how to uh, teach children. Um, And obviously not all teachers are good. You know, a lot of teachers are flawed in what they're doing. But like, man, for the most part, parents don't want to fucking teach their kid. They have work, you know what I mean? They have shit to do. You're not going to, like a construction working dad is going to bring their kid to work and be like, yeah, so sorry. I'm, uh, while I play the, while I use this jack, I was going to say play the jackhammer like it's a fucking instrument. Uh, <laughs> imagine, dude, a symphony orchestra. It's like beautiful music. And in the background, it's like, 
<laughs> it's like I can't, I can't hear the fucking, uh, the, uh, I can't hear the oboe or or the bassoon, my favorite instruments. Um, but you know, you know what I mean. Or like a construction worker can't stay at home and like teach his kids. What are you gonna do? Fucking a build a, a build a new table every day. That's what construction workers do. They build tables, and that's it. Okay, let's just let's watch that again. I don't really understand this idea that parents should decide what's being taught. Give me a break. <laughs> I also love the fact, like that's what he was watching. He was watching a montage of shit that he doesn't agree with. That's what he does in his spare time. He plays on stuff that is like left wing, uh, you know. You know, a lot of uh, progressive stuff, you know, and he just shakes his head all day like, I can't believe this shit. <laughs> Who put this on my TV again? Uh, okay. I always viewed homeschooling as somewhat of a cult. Quiet, reclusive. The different people. Abnormal in some way. I could never picture myself doing it. Oh, no, those are weird. I'm not doing that. That was before we had kids, and then we had kids, and... All of a sudden, time for school, and is this really what I should be doing? Dropping them off somewhere else. And the teacher said to me, he would not... Yeah, like, what's the problem? I mean, I don't have kids, but, like, wouldn't you be, like, stoked for school? Because you're like, finally, I can get my fucking kid off my hands. You know what I mean? Someone else teach him all this shit. You know what I mean? And like, I'll, like I let me know if you're homeschooled. Honestly, leave a comment. Let me know if you're homeschooled. Because um, I am curious to know how many of you uh, have been homeschooled. And like, what it was like, what your experience was like. But like, I don't know, man. I feel like I learned so much just by like being around kids my age, you know? Like, sure, it was shitty getting, like, bullied and shit. Like, I mean, if you're getting bullied in homeschooling, that sucks. Um, you're da- Like, your dad giving you a swirly and shit. <laughs> Give me your lunch money. It's like, yeah, I'm your son. I don't have any money. He, the son gives you allowance, and he's like, Give me your give me lunch money back. And you're like, okay, fine, man. What the hell? Uh, and I'm sure that joke has never been made before. Um, but like when I feel like I learned so much just from like being around kids my age and like, you know, cause we're like human beings. We're like, you know, we're social, right? We like being around people. We like, uh, talking. We like, uh, being close to each other. Right. We like, you know, like you can't have like a crush, you know, you can't have like a school crush if you're homeschooled cause that's, that's weird. Right. You can't do that, right? There's a lot of things you're missing. Sure, you can. And then what? You just have to like, because, you know, this is a Christian thing. So they're like, oh, they're, they're teaching that like being gay is okay in school. Okay, well, I'm, I'm we're pulling you out of there. And we're going to teach you our fucking bigoted shit. Okay, this is what that's what it boils down to. I cheat off of you because you are too stupid for him to cheat off. Wait, of hold you. up. Mike cheat off. <laughs> hold up. them off somewhere else. And the teacher said to me, he would not cheat off of you because you are too stupid for him to cheat off of you. Mike. Oh, shit. Yo, my camera died. One sec. Okay, so that guy got like roasted hard by one of his teachers. So he uh, now he hates all school, I guess. I don't know. Maybe don't be so fucking stupid next time, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Kid is not going to have that experience. We didn't have to be a special needs mm. teacher. We only had to be a, a teacher of our daughter. The kingdom of heaven. Oh well, that's nice. Is qualifying you to. Okay, speak. well that's nice. That's actually a nice thing to say. So into your children's life. I'm responsible for what we're putting into their head and into their heart. It changed everything. I think as a kid, you just want to feel like you're worth it. 
and homeschooling says you're worth it. The freedom we had was so worth the small sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, like, honestly, dude, I get the sentiment. I'm not going to be like, fuck everybody who's homeschooled, obviously. But, like, fam a lot of families can't do that. You know what I mean? And I know a lot of stuff, like, I mean, people, kids actually were homeschooled for the past, like, two years because of COVID. Um, but it's still a teacher that's teaching them external. It's not their parents, right? Like, a parent doesn't know how to, you know, be a, a teacher, right? You know what I mean? And then it, like, and then, like, where does it, where's, like, it's all, like, a gray area type thing where it's, like, oh, you didn't do your homework? You're fucking grounded, you know? If I didn't do my homework, I'd fucking get in trouble at school. And then I'd be grounded because I got in trouble at school. So I guess it makes sense. I guess they just cut out the middleman, you know. Um, but no, like some families, like my mom wouldn't be able to fucking homeschool me. She had a job, right? And my stepdad had a job. They had to go to every day, right? So it's like. And, like, most families are like that. Like, the, not everyone has the flexibility and, like, the, the privilege to do this. So it's like, I don't know. I, I don't know. It was to teach the kids. Now, 12 years later, I realize it wasn't a sacrifice. It was a total gift. You yeah, are she's in control. crying because she, she wishes that. They would just go to freaking school already. You get to choose curriculum. You get to choose methodology. It's yours to shape. You are the perfect person to teach them because you've been teaching your child since day one. She made sure. Yo, I okay, but like, you expect me, like, I, I'm just picturing like, because I'm like the age where people have kids, which is weird. Um, I'm never going to fucking have kids. I don't want them at all. I like, that's literally my nightmare. I never want kids. I'm never going to have kids. Um, so this is probably why I don't understand this either, but, um, cause in my head, I'm like, Oh, uh, I could not have kids for most of the day. I'll put them in school. Great. Um, but like if I was homeschooling a child right now, because I'm 28, like people have kids when they're like fucking like what, 24, 25 sometimes. Yeah, that's like a three, four year old kid. They start going to school. But like when I'm like 30 fucking something and they're in like, you know, what if I'm like 38 and now they're in like eighth grade, ninth grade, and now they want to learn about like calculus. I don't know. I don't know calculus. I'm not learning for you. I never, I didn't get it when I was in high school. I'm not gonna fucking get it now, right? Oh, you want to take, you want to do music lessons? You want to learn how to do the trumpet? Sorry, buddy, I don't know how to play the trumpet. Oops. Would have been nice if there's a whole music department, right? You know what I mean? How do you know everything to teach them? You can't. You can't. You can't. Like, not one person can teach your kid. You can't teach them everything, right? Be like, I, yeah, we're only doing we're doing only drama class. Sorry, that's uh, that's sort of my thing. That's all I know how to do. So we're just gonna do drama, uh, and that's it. So, yeah, you might not be able to, you know, add or subtract or you know your times tables, but you can do a fucking awesome tableau. Yeah, how about that? Yeah. Hey man, as long as you can do a, uh, as long as you can perform a a nice uh, soliloquy off by heart, then you're fine. <laughs> you know as long as your miming is on point you're fine you're gonna do just fine in life all right i had everything i needed i love her so much no one's gonna love our children more than we do also like one time i called my teacher mom and that was like the only time i was like ah fuck that actually be i wish i was homeschooled because then that would have been fine uh but one time in second grade, I was like, uh, I raised my hand and I was like, mom. And it was fucking embarrassing, man. The whole class laughed at me. So, uh, yeah. That's probably a fucking awesome compliment for teachers, though. If, it's t if, if a kid, like, looks at you like that and is like, oh, that's my mom. 
because I, I'm like so like I feel comfortable with them. That must feel awesome, man. You know what I mean? Greatest gift that I was given was my own identity. My parents gave me that. Go in with an. Ad- I okay. I think you gave you that because it's your own. And for my son, his own identity. There you go. Adventurous spirit. Break the mold. It's really beautiful outside the box. It's such a great adventure. Isn't homeschooling like public school at home? Ha! Not even close. (laughs) Okay, man. Nice, dude. Uh... I gotta show you this article, dude. From, was it Christian Headlines? Yeah, dude. Here we go. The trailer was like... I just spit everywhere. The trailer was like kind of good. But like underneath it. Like I feel like if you were to watch it, there'd be so much Christian shit. Because it's like... Uh, okay, Cameron shared his own experience to homeschooling. Uh, as he and his wife Chelsea homeschooled their six children. Uh, and obviously they did that because they're rich as fuck because they were in a, uh, he's an award-winning actor in a television show and a successful television show. So he's rich as hell. So he could afford to do that. No shit. Um, so homeschooling is this biblical concept that parenting and particularly the education of children is a parental responsibility and privilege. Um, we've handed our children over to the government, essentially giving uh, to Caesar the things that belong to God and our children made in the image of God belong to us. What, man? The pandemic made parents grossly aware of what public schools are teaching our kids. You know, science. (laughs) You know, the theory of the proven theory of evolution. So, you know, just evolution. Um, What else? Uh, You know, just equal rights, right? Feminism and, uh, you know, and and gay rights and, and trans rights and everything. You know, socialism, even learning about socialism, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's up to us, the parents, to cultivate the hearts, souls, and minds of our children. And today's public school systems are not working for us. They are actively working against us. Public education has become public enemy number one. Dude, that's crazy. (laughs) You're so wrong. Also, if you want to, like... Wait, is there, like, Christian schools if there's Catholic schools? If you want your kid to, like, learn your shit you want to, like, put them in fucking Catholic school or Christian school. Is there a Christian school? I don't fucking know. I don't know. But you know what? Sound off in the comments. Let me know if you're homeschooled and what you thought of it um, because I have literally no knowledge about it. And I'm curious, man. So let me uh, let me know. Uh, what are we at? Almost 40 something, dude. I gotta, okay. We got to talk about this and then we'll wrap it up. Um, I was done so dirty, bro. I was done so dirty. Um, sorry. So I'll, I'll screen record now, but, um, this website called her campus, they do like articles and shit for like, uh, I guess like college aged people. I guess people who are starting to go to college. Um, and the fucking title of this this of this per, of this article is The Downfall of Mainstream YouTube is here. And you know, they got fucking Alfie Days, Rebecca Black, you got Tati, you got this guy, you got Logan Paul, you got that girl that girl and you got that girl. And then who else? You got me, fucking top middle, top, top middle center, right there in the middle, dude. The downfall of mainstream YouTube is here, and Curtis is right there. Hey, fuck you guys. Why'd you use me? (laughs) I got sent this, like, people, like, Five different people sent me this after they, like, insulted how my haircut looks. They're like, yo, check this out. They're fucking doing you dirty. Um, the article's actually, like, it, you know, it's all talking about, like, how TikTok uh, is, is blowing up, right? And um, 
less and less people are watching YouTube and they moved to TikTok. Um, but in all honesty, like it's, and, and that's fair. Like there's a, a lot of the older YouTubers, right? Um, just like the content doesn't work anymore, right? It's just different. Like times have changed, right? Um, like you can't do like, like I'm sure people still do it, but you can't do like a fucking H&M clothing haul plus gas station story time, you know? Like that used to do numbers back then, but not anymore, man. You got to like, it, it's just different, right? Um, But yeah, obviously TikTok is like blown up in popularity, especially because the pandemic, like I feel like everybody downloaded it. Um, and there's so much, you know, you could do on there with like the effects and the music and all that shit. Um, but yeah, man, I don't think, I don't think, uh, I don't think YouTube is ever going to like go away. You know what I mean? Like, uh, they're different. They're so- totally different things to me, right? Like, TikTok is like stuff I watch. That's like what I watch when I'm like, you know, I just want like a quick distraction from something, right? Like, I'm, I, like, I'm shitting, you know? Like, I'm fucking pooping, and then I need something to be like, oh, I'll just watch some of those, right? Um, or if I'm scripting and I just like, oh, I also watch a few TikToks because I can't think of anything funny, and then I'll watch them, right? Um, but like YouTube is like when I want to be like engaged in something, you know what I mean? Like TikTok is for when I'm like, I want something to like, I just want to like turn my brain off. But YouTube is like the opposite. It's like when I'm like, when I'm eating and I want to like watch something entertaining, right? If I'm cooking, right? Um, cause it's like a whole thing. It's like, a, it's like, it's, it's longer, right? It's like, it's, it's usually like 15 minutes plus. So it's like, it's just a totally different platform so it's odd to like compare them but but where is it where is it where is it okay here we go this is actually kind of fire that he did this but um page the okay they're talking about how like you know money and stuff like creators getting money how they how they make money and it says uh patreon A crowdfunding website where creators can earn revenue on what they make has been widely used by YouTubers. The platform allows them to still create videos while having a continuous stream of income. For example, YouTuber Curtis Connor has a Patreon where his followers can become patrons for a flat rate per month and access content like extra videos and pre-sale codes for tours. So like, yo, shout out to them. Plug in my Patreon because I forgot to do it off top. Check out the Patreon slash very, really good. Patreon.com slash very, really good in the description. You get access to like 20 bonus episodes uh, when you, you know, when you join the Patreon. Um, And uh, we also just added like a yearly thing where it's like cheaper. It's like we got a whole thing over there, man. It's awesome. So shout out to them. I'm still kind of pissed you put me in the thumbnail, but thanks for the shout out on the Patreon. That's fire. Um, And then later in the article, they're like, oh, they talk about Vine. They mention Danny and stuff. And then they say... Could the commentary video genre save YouTube? Commentary YouTubers like Cody Ko, Curtis Connor, Danny Gonzalez, to name a few. Okay, so they kind of hype me up by the end, which is fire, and I and I and I'm okay with that. All right, I was about to block y'all. Um. So is YouTube era dead? It's safe to say YouTube isn't dead. Okay, so. Um. I don't know. I don't think YouTube that I don't think I'm sure like people are adapting and, and you know, some people won't aren't adapting and they're, you know, falling by the wayside and it's, it's hard, man. Um, but I will say I'm, I'm a fucking ride or die for YouTube, man. Like there is no other platform where you can make whatever you want, find an audience and like make like really good money doing it. You know what I mean? Like nothing exists like that anywhere else for like like the google ad share program is insane you know because tiktok has that like fund 
that like creator fund or whatever where they like div out, divvy out money it's like one like big chunk of money they just divvy out to like people right if they get a number a certain number of views but like um shout out hank green because i learned a lot about this but this is like uh it's pretty shitty the t- the creator fund is like kind of shitty low-key um because it's like you get rewarded for how many views right and there's one fixed amount of money that is divvied out right um so while TikTok gets more successful, TikTok makes more money, the fund stays the same size. So TikTok's getting more users, it's getting more money, more ad money. Um, but it's also getting more, it's making more uh, TikTok creators, successful TikTok creators with like hundreds of thousands of followers. Um, but the pool of money is the same, but there's more creators. So they're getting less money. As, as TikTok gets more successful, the creators make less money um which sucks because with youtube if youtube gets successful the creators also make more money right uh because more people are watching it more people getting the ads right so um just uh just something to think about you know what i mean and i learned that from a hank green video so shout out hank green friend of the podcast uh not he's not my friend he he hates me i hate him but he's a friend of the podcast um (laughs) <laughs> you know he's always phoning it like phoning my he's like dming the, the 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 podcast tiktok he's like yo what's up man how's it going this isn't curtis right yeah he fucking hates me um uh but yeah that's uh i just had to show that because that was funny man using my fucking face for the downfall of mainstream youtube oh ouch ouch also, that picture's edited. They probably don't even know that. That's not my real mustache. That's not my real hair. LOL. Okay. Uh, we could probably wrap it up. I'm at like 40-something. So thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Um, uh, th- I appreciate it. And uh, go see me on tour. Check out the tickets and stuff. It's going to be a good time. Um, and uh, what else was I going to say? Check out the Patreon. I'm, do- I'm going to record a bonus episode right after this. Uh, what are we looking at in the bonus episode? We are, oh dude, we're looking at some crazy shit. We're looking at a, a holistic, uh, we're going to go through the Curtis Connor subreddit and then we're going to look at this holistic, uh, Twitter person account and make fun of them because it's really funny. So, um, yeah, go subscribe if you want, but if not, it's all love, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Stay safe. See ya.